All right, guys, welcome back to part two of episode five. Here we're going through and creating a uh, still script. This still script is going to go through and teach you how to uh, alias uh, methods as well as just how to kind of follow the execution tree of, uh, of how this is uh, processed. So what we're going to do is we're just going to jump right back into it. Um, here we were just talking about uh, the fact that we were going to alias this method execute skill action. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to copy the whole thing and we're going to put it down here in our still script. So it was scene battle less than scene base which if I scrolled all the way to the top of the battle system that's what I would have got and we go ahead and insert the code. So this is basically because I haven't defined an alias this is saying I'm going to override it with this new method but again because we don't want to cause conflicts we're going to actually go ahead and define a um, an alias here. So let's go ahead and we're going to call this still script and then we put execute action skill so we put the name of the or the new name in which we're going to call this method and then here we've got the name of the old method um, and let's see from that we're going to go ahead and copy this name here and we're going to paste it right there now what we need to do is we need to define how we determine whether or not we're going to execute the new skill or the old skill for uh, this. Since we don't know which one it is, we actually have to do just a couple more things. Number one is what is the ID of the skill item? So we're going to come up here and we're going to create a new we're just going a new uh, constant. We're just going to call it ID. So we're going to be part of the module still. So it's an ID is going to be the skill ID of the still um, skill. So I'm going to go ahead and define skill number four. Okay, just random numbers I'm coming up with here. So we've got ID four. So now down here we are going to come back. We're going to say all right, I need to find out, number one, is this skill, so we say data skills, and then we're going to read from the module, still, the ID of the skill that we need to be reading, and we're going to ask it if that is equal to the, act, uh, the uh, action skill that is to be performed. So if it is equal to then we want to perform the new method. If not, then we want to perform the old method. Okay, So we're going to take this code now and we're going to move it up inside of this uh, if statement. And then just to keep things all tidy here, I'm going to tab that all over. And what we need to do is we need to assume here that no damage is going to be taken. So we don't actually need to do that and we will actually insert our own text back to the window as well. So let's go ahead and we will go through this. So here we've got our targets. So we are going to say, again, we're going to be assuming that this is a single target skill. So um, targets, I believe, returns an array, but let's go double check that. And make attack targets, make object skill targets, and it determines, and yes, they are, it is an array. So let's go back over here. Okay, so being that it's going to return an array, we can say targets zero, indicating the very first target. So here is our target, okay. And then we're going to say we want to still from them. So we can define a couple of different methods to do this. I'm going to define something as part of the game enemy, which is less than game battler. And then I'm going to say def still from me. And then the 
level of the actor who is stilling from me. So down here we can say target dot still from me and then we can specify the um, the level of the battler who is attacking and that was still level okay and so now we're saying still from me and this here will return a item ID okay so if it returns an item ID then that means that we we actually got something so now we need to, now we know what we need to return from this so we say um, number one we're going to determine our um, rate um, but we first need to find out what we can still so we can say self dot or actually it's just enemy ID and we're going to pass that to still so we're going to say still dot and and let's see can still from and then the enemy ID so we're going to put an if on that and say if I can still from this enemy and it's not actually going to return a true so we need to say is not equal to nil so that's saying that it returns something other than nothing but what we're going to do is rather than putting that there we're going to actually move that up one line and we're going to put that equal to can still and then we're going to say can still not equal to nil now we're going to go ahead and examine can still okay so can still is going to be an array of arrays which contains what you can still so now we say for item or not item uh, per let's see per uh, let's see it's not, it's not item it's per well I, we could just call it item it's not a big deal but that just doesn't seem right per package I don't know something like that so for pack it's just a name that's descriptive of what you're doing it can be anything I could put I or whatever it, it it's not a big deal so we are going to go ahead and put stilling equals false and now we're going to go ahead and say alright let's read the data out of pack so here we've got our item ID and that is going to be equal to the first cell that is this one of the of the item that you can still and you know what I think I am gonna just go with item okay so and then let's see still rate equals item one being the second cell and so now we actually need to do the compare so this is where we use the level so our level modifier is going to make it easier for us to still so we're going to take the rate and we're going to multiply it by the level okay so we're gonna take the still rate adjusted rate equals still rate multiplied by level okay so now we can say well you know what let's actually put a thing on that so that it cannot exceed 100 okay so if it's gonna be more than 100 then there's really no point so we can just say random number in between 1 and 100 and if that random number between 1 and 100 is equal to or I'm sorry less than the adjusted rate then we will be successful in our still so we will return the item ID okay so and we don't actually need that after all and we'll just go ahead and return here we'll return nil otherwise okay so we've now go ahead we've now defined the fact that we're going to return a particular item ID 
if we have uh, determined that we can still, and that's going to return that back over here with the item ID. So we now say if item ID not equal to nil, because if we can't still, we return nil. So then we say, all right, let's go ahead and add that item to your party, or give you that item. So let's scroll up here. Oh, you know what? We do need one more variable for the enemy. Just thought of it. Let's, uh, well, let, let me finish the other thought I had here first. Um, we need to add an item to the party. So let's see, there was a add item or something along those lines in here. We've got item number, has item, gain item. Here we are, gain item. All right, so, and then we pass it the actual item. So we'll actually go and fetch the item. Um, let's go ahead and look at something else that's giving them an item so that we can actually find out, that's not a good example, how to get that item. All right, data items and then the ID. So. We are going to get that item, and it's gain item, item, and then how many. So we're going to come back here, back into our script where we said, all right, let's do it. So we're going to do game party dot gain item, and then we do data items, and now we give it here the item ID. And then we'll always just still at the rate of one. Okay, so now we've earned that item. Now we need to send a message to the uh, window here saying that we were able to still that particular item. So we say, uh, the text here, we're just going to say, you have stolen, you have successfully, you know what, let's actually do it this way. So I'm gonna leave, just keep that thought right there. Here we're going to actually put up the text for what's going to happen in here. So we're going to say um, success equals you have successfully stolen and then we'll just leave it blank and that will be that. So failed. And we'll put you have failed to still. Okay. So now we've got a success message up here, and we're going to put still colon colon success. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add on to it the name of the item. So let's actually set the item here. Let's do item equals that, and then pass the item to it, and then we'll say item.name. That way, it takes the string and it adds this on to the end of it, okay? Now, all of that's all fine and dandy. We probably do want the animation to play, so we'll actually put that up here. We'll put the animation out no, no matter what, and if you're gonna require him to still, or use MP, then we'll put that up there, and we'll also do the um, common event coding if you need it. Okay, so that pretty much handles it. Um, although, we need to add in the else case for the fail message. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put that down there, and we're going to do, what was it, failed? Yes, failed. Okay, clear that out since we don't actually want to add what you were trying to still. Uh, since obviously we don't actually have any data to tell you what you were trying to still in the first place. So now we've got our system. It will appropriately give us a success message uh, plus an item name. If you fail to still anything, it'll tell you that you failed. And if it's not a still script in the first, or I'm sorry, a still skill in the first place, then it will just execute the action like normal. So. Um, one thing I actually just thought of is, is what if you've already stolen from them? Are we going to really allow them to continue stealing from them over and over and over again? 
My guess is probably not. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and say we need to we need to create something to say that I was stolen from. Okay, so we will go ahead and set a stolen from variable here. Okay, and we'll set that to true. Okay, now all we need to do is we need to come up here and we say if stolen from is not equal to nil because if it's not if it hasn't been told that it exists it's always going to be nil so if it's not equal to nil then return nil okay that way it automatically says all right you've stolen from me therefore you cannot steal from me again okay um, so that's it actually I think we've got everything and we're at time now so I'm gonna cut it short um, but uh, go ahead and uh, give us a met or leave me any comments anything else um, we'll actually come back I'll actually review these ones here I guess I'll just do a part three and we'll explain those ones so alright guys see you later <laughs>